Guys, in this video, I cover the hash code method in Java. I explain what the hash code method does, why it is useful, and how to implement it. Let's start out with what does the hash code method do? Now, the hash code method takes any object and translates that object to an integer. Essentially, it builds an integer representation of an object. Let's take a specific use case as example. Let's say we have a class named address. I use UML notation to represent this class. So the address class has four member variables or fields, if you will, named street name, house number, city, and zip code. It also has two methods, the hash code method and the equals method. Now in Java, hash code and equals are implemented in the java.lang.object class, and all classes have that class as a superclass. So that means all classes automatically inherit these two methods. And it's up to a class to override both of these methods. If you're curious on how to override the equals method, please check out my other video on the equals method. In this case, let's focus on the hash code method. Now, before we want to look into the implementation, let's explain what does it actually do? So the hash code method considers the member variables of a class, and it is used to take any object of the class and use the values of the member variables to generate an integer. So here, some, some or the values of some of these member variables, or potentially the values of all member variables, will be used in the hash code method to generate an integer. Typically, those member variables are used that make an object unique. Now, we cannot, or and we should not just return any integer. We don't just want to use return one every time. We want to use a good hash function that produces an integer that is unique based on the uniqueness of the values of the member variables. That means if we have a different street name, it should result in a different integer. If it's a different house number, it should result in a different integer. Now, if two values here are different, let's say we have a different street number or different integer or different city, if anything is different between two objects and both objects produce the same integer, that is called a collision because values are different, but integer or the hash code that is produced is the same. Now we want to avoid collisions. So it's good to have a good hash function that always produces a unique integer. Now, obviously with all the possible combinations of input values, there can and likely will be collisions depending on how many objects and how many values we have as input. But this is the general idea to take the member variables that make an object unique and take these values of those member variables in the hash code method to generate an integer. Now let's move on and clarify why do we do this. This is used for hashing. Cut. Now let's move on and explain why we use this. This is used for hashing. Specifically, it is used when using objects or storing objects in data structures, such as hash set, hash map, and so on. Now I don't go into more details. I cover this in separate videos, but this is where it's essentially used. Now, Another important thing is that when we implement the hash code method, we also have to implement the equals method. Now let's move on to how. So for the how, I created a class named address. Essentially, it's the class that I have already shown um, in the UML diagram. Here we have it. It has the four member variables and getter and setter methods for each of these member variables. Now let's create an object of the class and I set 
the member variables. So I set street name, boulevard. Then I set the house number. Let's use 15. I set the city. Some city. And I use and set a zip code. So zip code I use one, two, three, four, five. Now I mentioned already hash code is automatically inherited from java.lang.object. So I can call the hash code on here. So I can call address.hash code. And I output it. So I run this just to demonstrate what it does and what it outputs. So it just outputs some integer. Now by default, the integer is not a very good hash code. I mentioned already we want to select the variables that we want to use and we want to make it fairly good that there are not so many collisions. So we want to always override it. And I will use the address here, the address class to override that hash code method. I use the override annotation write the signature, which is integer as return with type hash code. There's no input because essentially the input that is used in this hash function are the member variables and we have access to them directly. Now, first I declare a constant named prime, initialize it to 31. Typically 31 is used and prime numbers are used because prime numbers help to avoid collisions. I don't go into too much more detail, but that is the, the idea behind prime numbers. Next, I declare a variable result. This will store the hash code. Now next, I write a statement and follow a pattern for each of the member variables that make an object unique. In this case, it's all four member variables. So let's start out with the first one. Here we do result equals result times prime plus, and then I select the member variable. In this case, it's street name. Street name is an object, so I want to check for null. If it's null, I use zero. Otherwise, I call hash code on that object. Well, let's make this window a little bit bigger. So this is the pattern. The next one will be house number. House number is an integer, so it's a little bit simpler since we don't have to take null into consideration. So I just do plus house number. And next I do result equals result times prime plus, this will be the city. City again is an object, so I check for null. If it's null, I use zero. Otherwise I call hash code on that object, on that string object. And finally, I use the zip code result times prime plus zip code. And when I'm done, I return the result. So this is how I compute a unique integer. This is the default implementation. Now running this again will give me a different integer, but essentially this is a good hash code that follows a good hash function. And this will help avoid coll collisions. Now let's take another look. Let's say this address class is used in a person class. Here I have the class person. And let's say I mentioned already most of the data objects, you want to implement both hash code and equals. Most IDEs provide support for this. So in Eclipse, if I go source, generate hash code and equals, here I can select the member variables that I want to use in hash code and equals, they should always be the same for, e for hash code and equals. So in this case, I want to use both. I click generate, click OK. And here we can see the equals implementation and the hash code implementation. Here we see the pattern again. Now, there is also a support function for hash codes. And this would be, if I don't want to write it out every time, I could say I want to do return objects dot hash code. 
or hash rather and then pass in the member variables that I want to use in my hash code function. So in this case, it's name and address. And then I wouldn't need to implement it fully. So this is a shortcut for this one. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you get an understanding how to implement the hash code method and roughly what the purpose of it is and where it is used. Thank you for watching.